second now. Uh, and just wanna say um, welcome to our first workshop of the day for NFT hack and super excited for everyone to start hacking later today. All right, we are good to go. So hello everyone. Uh, we have Johannes here from NFT Port with his workshop, how to bring your NFT application to market in hours. Um, super excited to have NFT Port here. And with that being said, I'll hand off the mic to Johannes. Thank you and welcome to NFT Hack everybody. As uh, I'd actually like to start with a sort of a short story how we NFT board uh, attended uh, as hackathon participants during last year NFT hack. And it was, if I'm not mistaken, of like March or something like that, the previous NFT hack. And uh, as a company we were, or as a startup, we were actually quite in a sort of a difficult spot because we were in the middle of a build. And uh, we ended up uh, attending NFT hack. And uh, we got a lot of inspiration uh, from NFT Hack, and we actually sort of, uh, in parts, also grew out from NFT Hack. So all the participants, all the hackers there, all the builders, all the creators, I guess the one of the message that I would like to give you is, like NFTs is a new space. There's a lot of new opportunities, and you can create uh, this, this NFT world. So it, it, everything that you see, let's say about NFT board or any other kind of NFT company today, uh, they're created by people just like me and, and you. Um, so I guess this is the sort of the first message uh, to you that uh, you, you can uh, create really cool, uh, build really cool things here in the NFT space. Uh, and as a, sort of the title of the talk is how to actually bring your NFT application to market in, in hours. And then I won't trouble with you any kind of, let's say like flashy slides. I'm an engineer by my heart as well. Um, so I'll sort of give you a really quick rundown what NFT ball is, how it actually helps you. Uh, and then we'll tie right into actual building uh, together. So I'll show you that. NFT APIs as with, with uh, what you can actually build your application. Um, and as a sort of a start, we like to tell about, we are basically Stripe for NFTs. So if you ever use Stripe, uh, then you know it's like really easy to use, has like great developer APIs, et cetera. Um, and we really like to help developers um, ship their NFT products to market. So you don't have to worry about the complex NFT infrastructure. Uh, you can just focus on your own product, um, and their own users. And basically, we are already today used by over 5,000 developer teams, um, a lot of like known names, like such as Nifty Gateway, which is like one of the world's largest NFT marketplaces. And if it, the question is, what can you actually build uh, with NFT board? How does it help you? Then we sort of uh, like to categorize into three different buckets. So one is you can uh, deploy uh, currently on Polygon uh, NFT contracts and uh, mint NFTs. Uh, I'll show you that as well. Uh, so those are like your fully fully owned contracts. Uh, you can customize them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the second big part is that you can like very easily uh, pull NFT data into your applications. And that is uh, for both Ethereum and, and Polygon. And third one is what we like to call enhanced APIs. So let's say you want to actually add like a search bar at your NFT application, or you want to add a recommendation engine, or even an NFT counterfeit detection so your users uh, don't get uh, forwarded, then you have these kind of like enhanced APIs as well that you can use. So let me come to the docs now. Um, and yeah, like uh, sign up is you could just grab your uh, free API key. Um, it's, uh, you, can, you, can, you can start by just like self sign up. And also for NFT hack participants, we actually have a package. Uh, so if you'll DM us in NFT port uh, Discord channel, then we'll actually increase your uh, API limits. Uh, so specifically you can limit, uh, for free, you can mint up to 1,000 NFTs uh, and uh, get access to all the NFT data as well. So now let's uh, jump 
into uh, the API docs. Uh, we also have some nice tutorials here. Uh, I won't dive into too uh, deep here, uh, but you can basically like how can you actually use the NFT data, uh, minting, you know, how you can actually create your NFT collection. Um, if you want to create like 10K NFT mints, um, how you can create dynamic NFTs. Uh, so let me, I can actually show you how this dynamic NFTs look like. So we can, So this is, this is of course like speed, like uh, speed up, uh, but you can basically, let's say you mint an NFT, uh, then you can do an API goal. You can actually change the metadata as well. Uh, so the NFT becomes dynamic and you can create a lot of use cases uh, with dynamic NFTs. This is of course like how do you get your MetaMask with, with your homepage um, and even uh, how you can actually use NFTs inside unit as well uh, using NFT ports so you can, Either pull NFT data, uh, do your Unity app uh, game, um, or mint NFTs as well, and save for enhanced APIs. And now let's um, jump into actually, uh, we'll start with uh, getting the NFT data. So let's say you want to actually get, the, uh, if you go. Let's say I want to get all NFTs um, that are in the board API club uh, collection, then I can grab the contract. Uh, is this. Can I just add the contract address, uh, chain Ethereum. Uh, I will want to include metadata. So the response has metadata as well. And I will fire it up. And I will get the NFTs. Uh, so this is, uh, if I'll actually exclude metadata for a second. Then you will get all the NFTs, all the tokens uh, in this contract. Um, and as you can see, there are 10,000 in, in total. And um, if you put metadata back, then you can get like the image, uh, open the cached image, uh, we'll see like specific, like uh, all the, all that data that you see, let's say about the properties uh, you have in the, in the response. And we also give back uh, cached file URLs. Uh, so if you, those are like um, cached files that we download from IPFS uh, or wherever the original file is stored. Uh, so you can actually basically, uh, it's, it's semi like a CDN. Uh, so you'll, you can download the original assets very fast uh, from this uh, Google bucket. So this is like returning contract NFTs. You can as well do the same for uh, getting like a single NFT details. Um, this also for, you can do the same for the Polygon. And we have endpoints for ownership data. So let's say I want to get, uh, uh, say so owned by DD or Walt. I want to get all NFTs to this account uh, owns, I'm just here, uh, retrieve NFTs owned by an account. And they'll get all the NFTs to this specific uh, account owns. Uh, so this is like a different, a lot of different use cases. Let's say if I want to build like gallery, if I want to build any kind of uh, application where I want to show to the user what NFTs uh, he or she owns, uh, then that's a, a very easy, uh, API to use. You can also get NFTs that account has created. Uh, and by creation, it's basically if you mint an NFT. So let's say I go to a um, NFT drop collection uh, has just opened up. I go to someone's home page and I mint to my own wallet. Uh, then that sort of initial minting is basically creation. Uh, so let's see if this account has uh, minted any as well. So this one, it seems hasn't minted. But basically, uh, if you if you would have minted NFTs, then uh, those NFTs would be seen here. Then you have data about transactions. Um, we have sales statistics uh, about, let's say, if you take the same, uh, if you want to get port eight your club uh, sales statistics. Then we get the sales statistics uh, like one day, one Sunday, thirty day volume uh, sales like average price, uh, floor price, market cap, et cetera. 
We can also get transactions uh, by contract, um, and those include uh, on-chain transactions and also uh, for uh, all of contracts uh, off-chain as well. Uh, so specifically off-chain data, what I mean is OpenSea plus variable zone order book data. So again, if we take the board API club and we want to get all tran uh, transfers, or actually let's say sales, uh, that this in this contract is happening. Uh, so this is on-chain data, and we can get all the all the sales uh, here. So who's the buyer? Who's the seller? Like um, details about the specific NFT quantity. What's the price? Transaction hash. Uh, where was where was that uh, transaction took place? So it's an open sea. Also, you'll get like cancel listings. Um, and you can do the same for basically, there's also a, a parameter for uh, if you want to get all uh, transactions uh, in that specific uh, contract. Uh, and what it does is it will return to you uh, transfer, per mint, feeds, list, and, and sales. So as you can see, this uh, type sale, transfer, cancel listing. And, and so forth, so forth. Now you can do the same uh, about, let's see if we go to that specific, um, I wanna get uh, transactions that this specific account has done. Then I can go to return transactions by an account. I wanna see all, let's say all uh, sales that he has done. So I can skip all the sales that this account has done or any other kind of, uh, let's say, transfers, uh, listings, uh, buyings, et cetera, et cetera. And the same uh, when I showed uh, for a full contract, I can do for the specific NFT as well. So if you go to this uh, app here, This three three six eight, and we get all all the history of that specific NFT, all the transactions uh, that has happened to it. Then I can get all the transactions like transfer sales, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now this is the NFT data part. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's like really easy to use, uh, like just simple API goals. And in the docs, you will find all the like the details as well. Now we'll jump to minting. Uh, so let's say you wanna, as you saw, like um, you wanna create your own collection or you even, let's say uh, you're creating a game uh, or any kind of like an application uh, where you want to mint an NFT based on some user event. Uh, so let's say, you know, I'm playing a game. Um, I have a sort of, a, I do some sort of a quest, uh, kill a monster. Um, and then now you want to, from your backend, let's say you want to mint an NFT uh, to my user. Uh, so this is sort of like a, uh, those kind of like dynamic flows uh, are very easy to, uh, to do uh, with, with uh, our APIs. And the first step, what you can do is deploy your own uh, NFT contract. Uh, so it's a standard ERC721 contract. You will see all the code. Uh, it's open sourced uh, in GitHub. And um, basically you'll get all the parameters here that you can customize uh, like your contract uh, chain. Uh, we currently support Polygon and Rinkeby. Uh, ETH mainnet is upcoming as well. And the name of the contract symbol, uh, owner address. Let's say if, if I were to deploy the contract, I would set it as uh, my own address. Then I would, um, something that you can do if you wanna create dynamic NFTs, uh, then you can set metadata update to be less true and uh, base URI as well, if you wanna do sort of a, a reveal uh, where you know NFTs are hidden at first, and at the same time, you can actually change the base URI and the NFTs are uh, revealed. So if I would, uh, uh, as the first step, uh, you can deploy the contract. Again, you can do everything from here. Then after that, you can uh, basically um, 
already start minting, or if you don't have, uh, haven't have uploaded files to IPFS yet, then you can upload your files also to IPFS. Uh, so it's like really easy to uh, use. Let's say I can pick like a, any kind of file from here. Let's say NFTs, Christmas. All right, some Christmas picture. Uh, it's a really large picture, uh, so I can upload my files. And uh, the files that are being uploaded to IPFS, um, and they're also back, backed up by a file going uh, using NFT storage. So let's say, wait until it finishes uploading. Here we should pick the smaller uh, file. Uh, usually when you're uploading a larger file, it's good to like do from code. Uh, for terminal, uh, but it finished. And now you can see that um, I'll get back to IPFS URL. This will probably take some time until uh, an IPFS node responds. And it's a really large file as well. Um, so, and once you sort of upload, let's say 10,000 of your NFT pictures uh, or any kind of other assets that you want to upload, uh, then you would go as a next steps after, let's say, deploying the NFT contract, uploading the file to IPFS, then you would upload metadata to IPFS. And again, you can uh, basically customize uh, whatever you need to customize in metadata. So you can have a name for your NFT, description, file URL. This is the same URL, URL that we got from here that we upload the file uh, IPFS. But if you really want to, you can also use any other kind of file URL, uh, even if it's like centrally hosted, uh, you know, nobody's uh, really sort of like uh, saying that you can't do it. Uh, just like a sort of a soft recommendation that you use uh, decentralized storage uh, with NFTs. External URL, URL, this is something like that basically, you know, an open Z, uh, you can see it as like, let's say your home page. Uh, if you wanna, up, if you're actually uploading, uh, any kind of, let's say, videos, uh, audio files, and you can add animation URL. Uh, so here, uh, you can also add custom fields. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, in NFT metadata, you can upload any arbitrary data. And uh, what you can do is have it as sort of even like key value uh, database uh, in a way. Uh, so in this metadata, uh, uploading metadata, you can just like, add any kind of arbitrary data that you want to include uh, with your NFT. And here are the attributes as well. So attributes are again, like the basically properties that you see. And uh, the, the spec is basically open these uh, own spec as well. So it's, it's in the same format of attributes. Now, as the first step, you deploy the NFT contract, you uploaded uh, your files at like the first metadata at first, then as the next step, uh, you're basically ready to uh, start minting uh, to your own uh, fully owned contract that you deployed uh, in the first step. Uh, you would basically take the contract address uh, that you got from the deploying. Uh, you would add the metadata URI that you got during the uploading metadata like this, and, and to the address that you want to mint that specific NFT. Is it your, for example, your own, uh, own address, wallet address, account address, or if I brought the example that you and I actually already mint to a user uh, whom, let's say, does some kind of event in your application, uh, he buys something or he, let's say, plays a game, then you can, and if he enters uh, his uh, address, then from your backend, you can actually already mint uh, to that user uh, wallet address. So this is sort of the minting uh, part. We also have like um, helper uh, sort of functions or sort of endpoints as well, like retrieving a minted NFT. Uh, you can also up, update a minted NFT. Uh, so this is in the case when you, during contract deployment, uh, you set metadata updatable as true. Uh, and then you can basically um, update the method of the URI. So you can sort of uh, create the NFT as, as a dynamic one. And you can see uh, specifically, and you can also later, if you're done updating, uh, then you can also freeze metadata. Uh, so uh, everything is recorded on chain. 
uh, and users also see, okay, you update it once, but you can't update it anymore. Uh, so it's frozen now on a contract level. And if you just wanna, let's say, uh, test things out, there's like easy minting with URLs as well, um, and even in a file upload, uh, this is a shared, if you're using those easy minting endpoints, those will be uh, minted to our, our uh, shared contract. So if you're building your own application, et cetera, uh, then we recommend uh, deploying your own contract. Uh, then we can continue to enhance the APIs. Uh, so for first one is multi-chain NFT search. Uh, so let's say if we count the OpenSea or any other sort of majority of uh, NFT applications, then you can, you have some kind of uh, search uh, bar, right? Uh, but building a good search is quite uh, complex uh, or it's not, not maybe so complex, but it takes quite a lot of time uh, handling all the indexes, the databases, et cetera. So what you can have is, um, let's say, you can have, uh, you can search NFTs uh, across different chains. Uh, we currently support Polygon and Ethereum, or you can search across both of them. And let's say, I'll fire it up. And then it responds all the NFTs that have in their name or description, uh, the search query. So I search for Vitalik. So I get all, all of the NFTs back. You also have a recommendations uh, AI uh, engine basically. So, and this is based on uh, visual content. Uh, so let's say if I own some sort of uh, specific art uh, that looks, uh, let's say has like abstract art, then I can actually, let's say, I have a typo here, but I would, want to find, let's say, similar, visually similar images to this one or recommend uh, similar NFTs to uh, users, then what I would just do here is uh, pass that image into the endpoint and it will respond with uh, similar abstract uh, NFTs uh, images. Uh, so it's the AI works based on uh, using computer vision uh, and there is, um, let me see, there is in the user interface uh, where you can actually test things out as well. Fingible. So this is like a showcase uh, application uh, built in those enhanced APIs. Uh, you can do the text search here. Uh, this is the same endpoint that I uh, mentioned to you. So Vitalik's blood elixir, um, you can do the reverse. So this is basically the reverse image search here is the recommendation AI. Now let's see if I, so as you can see, this was an original and you can find like similar, similar ones, or even you can actually, let's say, You just describe what you want. Um, and basically here you go. So <laughs> uh, Vitalik is uh, smoking uh, with a hat. And there is also the counterfeit detection. So let's say if you, let this uh, sport yacht club, a uh, specific one, I can take the contract address. I'll also filter out the same contract uh, address NFTs. And three, 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 six, eight. I'll search for, and as you can see, uh, very similar um, NFTs, but those aren't actually the original ones. Probably OpenSea has even uh, has taken those down, uh, luckily, or unluckily, you know, it's sort of uh, depending on the point of view. Um, and yes, those, those are sort of like, uh, depending on your own use case, uh, you might want to show the user, hey, this kind of like NFT has been like created already, uh, or you might want to automatically take things down. This is up to, up to the sort of developers uh, to decide. And uh, and yeah, those are also the duplicate detection AI that I just showed here as well. You can pass in an URL, token ID, or even upload a file as well. So 
this is sort of a, in a very quick manner, uh, give a, an overview of the NFT APIs and infrastructure. Um, and to sort of a recap, you can really easily mint NFTs to for your own contracts, uh, dynamically mint NFTs. Uh, you can get uh, NFT data from Ethereum Polygon, and you can use those kind of enhanced APIs, uh, which help you build a better product. And I will now check what kind of questions do we have. Floor price. So this is the first question I will take. Um, I guess this is about uh, sales statistics. So floor price uh, is actually from, let's take this uh, board ape one again. Uh, floor price uh, is um, actually from uh, OpenSea. Uh, so where we're, we're getting the uh, floor price data. The rest of the data, let's say total volume, total sales, et cetera, et cetera. Number of owners, this is on, all on chain data. So what's the delay between a mint versus when it shows up in your index? Use case for this would be creating a live streaming if I think dropped uh, minted right now. So I guess the question is about like how fast, let's say if you mint uh, with our endpoints and how fast uh, the same NFTs uh, are being dis sort of are available in our own uh, NFT data APIs. Uh, and usually it's like a few minutes. Uh, so if you would need to sort of have a use case of uh, like a live streaming where you need it in seconds, uh, then at the moment uh, we don't uh, have this sort of a fast turnaround uh, in order to support that use case. But you can uh, also test it out as well. It might be quick, uh, sort of quick enough for you. And the second part of the question, how fast for Let's say a um, transaction is recorded on chain and how fast it is uh, in our uh, index. Again, this is usually in between like two to five uh, minutes is the usual uh, sort of delay at the moment. Here you see 1155 supported. Um, there's two ways how to answer the question. One is uh, for minting. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, we are shipping it. We're basically like in the testing phase for it. Uh, we're shipping it beginning of next week. Uh, which means, unfortunately, it's not ready for the NFT hackathon. Um, NFT hack, but for NFT data, if you're pulling uh, NFT data from the any uh, NFT data uh, API, then ERC eleven fifty five is supported indeed. Alrighty, so it seems I got all the questions covered. And uh, again, uh, NFT board dot X Y Z. Um, you will if you DM us or just write to uh, Discord, we will also increase uh, limits for you. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, wrap it up and hope uh, you'll have a fun and uh, a successful NFT hack. Bye. Thank you so much, Johannes, for the awesome workshop. Um, super interesting. And I'm sure everyone learned a lot from um, this workshop. <laughs> um, and just to reiterate what Johannes said, uh, when he first introduced himself, he was a hacker at last year's NFT hack um, and created this product. And now he's back and supporting this year's NFT hack. And it's super amazing to have him here um, and helping to support all of you. Uh, we do have a workshop right after this and some more today. And we also have our kickoff event at 12 12 p.m. So uh, Eastern time. So please be sure to tune into that. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.